Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Diz Unlimited podcast, episode 19. I'm your host this week, Rhino, written in the script right here for me. And joining me today is Dreams Unlimited travel agent, Hurricane Hannah Anderson. Here she comes. And hey, speaking friends. speaking of Big Daddy, we have the biggest daddy of all, <laughs> Craig Williams. Oh, hoy, hoy. See, I th- see, I feel like I'm trying out the different... The di- I went with you. I went a little yeah. like WrestleMania. Oh, I love that. I want it every time. And in yeah. fact, I told you I want that on a shirt. Yeah. Or a tattoo. Oh, maybe. honey, we're doing shirts. Okay. Oh, we're doing shirts, everybody. Okay, girl. Don't worry. I, guess what I did last <laughs> night for two hours? The worst mock-ups of shirts that Craig Williams has ever seen in his life. And he was too polite to say anything negative about okay. it. I'm just sitting there saying, how many videos did he make last week? <laughs> Well, I am the dead weight here at the Diz, <laughs> according to the internet. So I just want what? to fulfill my role. I what? disagree. That's me. I'm new. I'm part time. I say um a lot. I'm yeah. boring. Um, um, speaking like, of, um, um, this episode is brought to you by <laughs> me. Dreams Unlimited Travel. <laughs> <laughs> they are experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. When you book with them, it costs you nothing extra on your trip, and you help support the channel and all the content that we produce, mm-hmm. as well as our Patreon. Well, okay. The way I just worded that, it sounds like mm-hmm. Dreams brought our Patreon supporters, like they created them in some sort of lab. So I'm going to reword oh. this. This episode is also brought to you by our Patreon supporters. If you want to learn more about that and uh, check out some fun, exclusive content, you can head over to patreon.com slash Diz Unlimited, where you can join in on things like our after show, which we'll be doing right after today, where we are, uh, we may or may not be going to do our, which is feeling like it's starting to become a tradition. (laughs) We're doing a, a, a Taco Bell um, menu review after this episode so yeah so if you ever like questioned our food taste or our food reviews we love taco bell so there you go that's our barometer i'm going to uh, take welcome. this moment to acknowledge uh, a great comment in this chat as well from mm. uh, one patrick barton who says rhino's resume dead weight slash cranberry expert <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well that's a little one you know more cranberry bog expert per, yes there's a difference mm-hmm. between the bog and the actual mm-hmm. cranberry it's a whole thing yeah right. yeah okay. it's a whole thing so um how are you guys doing this week i'm okay i'm getting over a cold so are you I'm feeling okay in the super cramped space that we're in i mean i know it, we're so close LOLs. to each other right now because yeah no, I, lo- I love this cramped space, you yeah. know? I just said I was getting over a cold, and I'm in this cramped space with you guys. So yeah, the, the irony being that you're like 10 feet away from me right now. Right, I know, that yeah. is so true. I just, but. yeah. Anyway, how are you, Craig? I like your shirt. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. It's festive today. I didn't know, because we're finally going over to Universal later yeah. today from Mardi Gras, so I didn't want to bring outfit changes like you, so. No, so I was going to wear just, the like, my X-Men shirt that has, because um, I was like, I don't really have a Mardi Gras theme shirt i have uh, so there's two options i'm gonna have a shrek t-shirt that has says shrek but it says it in purple and green letters oh yeah so i was like right. then i can just be obnoxious and keep saying you better shrek yourself before you wreck yourself <laughs> to you over and over in this video or i also have my x-men shirt that has gambit little tiny gambits on it and gambit is from new orleans and he speaks with that cajun accent and so I thought I mean, that that's was a, little a deep more. cut, but also no, they had that X Men trailer. You guys, are you guys excited about this? I know this isn't like yeah. main Disney, and we'll get to the main part of the <clears> show in a second. But did you guys see the preview for that X Men '97 animated show? I mean, obviously, uh, yeah. No, I'm excited for it, and I'm not even X Men fan, yeah. but I love it. I liked we the show this. when I was a kid. Yeah. I liked Spider Man well, of that era, and they yes. had a crossover and everything. I liked the Spider Man story a little better, but X Men, I was like, this is too adult. <laughs> but I do love, <laughs> but I did love it, so I'm excited. Yeah. Craig, you don't like the X-Men, huh? No, I do not. Just <laughs> no. like he also hates Superman and children. So mm-hmm. with that, let's move on. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, it's one of my new catchphrases I'm working on. Let's rip it and stick it. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Okay. Could you explain the catchphrase? Nope. nope. <laughs> Just trying to think about what would look good on a t-shirt, and but someone's going to ask questions about that one. What would you one. rip and then stick? Uh, hamburger in half, a churro. Uh, okay. lots. I, think I think this you is could do definitely a lot. turning into like a wrestling promo for you. Like, rip it and stick it. Like, yeah. you know, snap into Slim Jim. 
kind of, you know, oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. You got to take two bites to tell. Okay. Oh, is that another me, one? That's okay. amore. We are. Okay. So today. That's amore. <laughs> this, is, this is what our chat's going to be about today because mm-hmm. guess what? We are going to have a pretty, I feel like. Um, <laughs> We're going to have a fun episode. I do yeah. want to I do want to jump in for a second with seriousness, sure. though. And, uh, of course, always take a chance to promote everything else that you can find, uh, awesome. not only on this channel, the Diz Unlimited YouTube channel, but uh, everywhere else, you know, that we have. So, uh uh, Dreams Unlimited Travel has been releasing a bunch of new episodes of that podcast. You can find that at youtube.com slash dreams unlimited travel. Uh, and there's also an audio podcast feed for those episodes if you want to get it uh, more from uh, our travel agent perspectives out there. And uh, then for us, of course, you know, we've been coming at you real hard with the Disney snack attacks, but. Do not worry. We do not have any uh, logos or anything to smack you in the face with. I do understand. I might have went a little over the top with the last snack attack, but I'm st- I'm what? just yeah. It's, That's you the know, point of snack attack. There's no such thing as too much. I you know we might have pushed it. We might have got a little too far over there. But uh, it's no. either way. We've got snack attacks coming. We've got dining reviews. We've got the Universal show that uh, you know we've been uh, we we went to Circus McGurkis Cafe Stupendous and said the <laughs> name of that restaurant at least like 18 times uh we, we went was in it stupendous or stupid and this second nope one. i'm done i'll see it was out. not good that's <laughs> not all good I for you. Hey. we did not enjoy it okay but. here's the thing my stomach did it hurt for the rest of the day 100 percent. should you watch it just for the disgusting menu hack i made absolutely because guess what i think i'm gonna go back and do again Ooh, really? Yeah, I'm going to do bold. it. You're bold. I like it. You, you have to watch the video to find out what it was, though. Yep. You have to check that out. Uh, of course, Connecting with Walt, our audio-only podcast that you can find <laughs> uh, you know, on any major podcast platform, but not on YouTube. Uh, we've got just a bunch of great shows for you, so uh, be sure to check them all out. I highly recommend Snack Attack Dining. Uh, Snack this show. Attack! Yeah, Someone that's it. Well, we don't have we don't have the logo in here. It's we gotta we gotta oh, focus. Okay. Oh, okay. Focus. All right. Listen, Patrick Martin's at it again. The key to snack attack, Craig, rip it and stick it. Boom. <laughs> that's a more, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay, get ready to for us to be our most obnoxious forms from here on out. Right, just which is our out. true only yeah. form. Yeah. <laughs> you said get in a room together. You weren't prepared for this. Yeah, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, be careful what you wish for. It's one it's of those true. situations. You rub this lamp a little too hard. Well, uh, with that Speaking gross comment, Daddy, with let's that, move on. <laughs> yeah. let's rip it and Speaking stick it. Speaking of Big Dad, <laughs> <laughs> yikes! On this week's show, we're gonna uh, we're gonna be over what we consider the the. Must do attractions and shows of Walt Disney World for adults. adults. Yes. Okay, so don't Eww. come at me. I am now outnumbered at the Diz with people who have children and people who don't. I think, um, which is great because we're the same. Most person, of their kids though. are nice. The jury's still out on yours, Hannah. No, but my kid no. is <laughs> not. Uh, so fun fact for you guys: my kid came to the snack attack video, and uh, it was past bedtime or bedtime nap time. And uh, yeah, just you know, we did the best we could. So thank you, everyone. No, he was a, he was he's a trooper. Two. My we best, my my favorite part about your kid is to me, he looks like he's already like twenty two and has a job with a brief because <laughs> he always looks so it's professionally true. dressed thank you and she hannah put him on the ground for one second thinking it would be okay after she gave him three lollipops and he run. like his feet <laughs> were his feet started going bum, 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 and then he took off like he was revving yeah. up and it Correct. was one of the funniest things so yeah thank you anyway you're welcome <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, welcome. (laughs) So anyway, so maybe our opinions aren't going to line up with your opinions, and that's okay. The list is ours. As always, you can uh, feel free to name call and let us know what you don't agree with. Uh, So I have the list of what Mm -hmm. everyone said yes or no to um, on here. Yeah. And And, uh, do you want to say the rules here? I I will. I'll, I'll chime in with that. So we obviously are three adults in the room. This is a list aimed at what we consider to be the must do attractions for adults as of right now. That could change once Tiana's Bayou Adventure opens up later and other attractions. Uh, but this is uh, this is just in this moment in our opinions. Mm-hmm. Uh, to become a must-do, two out of the three of us had to agree. And I think there was only like two or three that made it to the list where there was uh, one of us who was a dissenting opinion. So we kind of were all right in the same mm-hmm. on the same track with this of what we consider to be the must-do for adults. Uh, that being said, if you don't 
hear or see an attraction that we listed, feel free to call us out on it. And we will, uh, you know, I'll be watching the, the chat. If you're here with us live on YouTube, I'll be watching. If you're like, how did that not make the list? We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll say why. Uh, but we're going to focus primarily today on what we do consider those must do's to be. So, uh, you know, Stacy packed her bags on Left Wall Disney World. So the Diz Unlimited team, we're stepping in to make the must do's. Dang. Today. Okay, wait a second. I was can like, we who do... is Stacy? Oh, I knew immediately. I, like, can we do an in memoriam for her really quick? Like, she's I can't. Not dead, right? Well, she's not, so but. Um, angels. <laughs> Far away. No, I'm not gonna um, do it. Hey, fun fact. Um, well, my, our rep is also called Stacy Racer for a second. I was like, what? Oh, Stacy, yeah, I love like, you, sorry, my like, girl, my queen. Yeah. I also love Stacy from uh, Must Do Disney. Uh, yeah. What? Why did that never come back post COVID? Like, I quote Stacy all the time. Yeah. Stacy on the TV. She sure did. Yeah. Like when she referred to you know Chunker Munker. Um, pretzel you call me? wound beer. What'd you call me? There's another I, shirt. Yeah, Where's <laughs> another shirt, gang? My it. dad always so was. We we quote Stacy a lot. My dad always says Mother Chunker, but that's the not summit. Plummet. First you summit, summit then, then you, you plummet. plummet. Oh yeah. That's Guys, it. um, He's I right. think I hate you both. Oh wow! <laughs> I love. I just love Stacy. I, I love wasn't you a guys, fan. But not a fan. What? That's fine. It's okay. Mm. He wasn't staying at the resort, so he doesn't I, really get oh. it. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, when we so when Stacy was on TV, the <laughs> moment I checked in, Stacy came on the TV. The moment I checked out is when she was turned off. We watched Stacy the entire time we were on vacation, and so many happy memories. So bring her back. Bring, no, I'm done. Maybe with this we woman. should do it. End this conversation I, about her. All right. I just right, feel bad go. because Sarah's like, I despise Stacy way too over the top and cheesy. How are you still watching this I, right now? Then? I am Stacy. I, I am Sarah Valentine. That's my code name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say hello oh. to Kyle Bassa and Sarah Valentine. Oh my god, Kyle Bassa, that's a deep cut. We got it. Um, okay, so we're gonna start our uh, list today for some reason at Magic Kingdom, the the premier Never adult park at Disney. The what? Never heard of it? Yeah. It's got a little castle. Well, it's not. You so mean little. Walt Disney World? Is that what Walt Disney World, yeah, baby? Walt Disney World, right here, because people hate when I talk about Disneyland. Um, so this is the consensus. Um, and again, like Craig said, it had to had two out of three yeses to make the list. So these are the lists, that, or this is the list that we have for Magic Kingdom Park that we think are the must dos for adults. Hang on to you. Hang on to your popcorn buckets. Yep. I feel Hang like we need butts. the American Idol theme now, the, or not that. Uh, who wants to be a millionaire? The no, I thought American Idol would be because I'm like Ryan. I'm, I'm Ryan, so I'm like Ryan Seacrest, obviously. Oh. You know, duh, we're basically twins. Like in, in that musical movie you I sure was about watching that? the other day. <laughs> you sure yeah. about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys look exactly like. Um, okay. Yeah. How do you, should I read them all just in a row? Uh, no, let's go one at a time. You okay. Know? Let's take this first step. Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm, yeah, I three would, yeses. Three yes. Try not to talk about Disneyland during this. Well, <laughs> and that's why I said okay, because for me, my perspective is I didn't go to Disneyland until I was thirty. That was my first time there, and so I'm trying to be like, f you know, I'm sure there's many of people out there who've only been to Walt Disney World. So I'm like, okay, but I think when you've only ridden this one. It still has that mystique to it. When you ride mm. the Disneyland one, you're just like, well, now I'm jaded because sure. I've missed out on so much of it. But just putting this one into context, well, I think also like it's been 22, 21 years since we've had Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Uh, and that's exactly what uh, I was going to say with mm. this. We are now at the point where the generation wow. that grew up with Pirates of the Caribbean movies are now considered yeah, adults who are taking their the kids one. to Ooh. Walt Disney World. So, uh, yeah, that, that entire generation that was experiencing those movies, they are now the adults. And I know I went to all those movies with my family, too. So uh, my even the grandparents in the group know Pirates of the Caribbean, the movie. So, yeah, it's okay, a, guys. it's Is it's for adults. Is old right now? Like, excuse me while I go touch up my Botox because I am feeling... <laughs> 
<laughs> so old, that's but our that's other exactly. Rum is for over here. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, me- Meta spa. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to get in on that. Um, no, but seriously, I mean, I remember. So the first um, Curse of the Black Pearl, I watched at a sleepover. And um, I remember I was one of the shelter kids, and it was PG 13. And I was like, wow, this is this is really living. And uh, I was in high school. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I, I'm I sorry. mean. Yes. You were not like watching PG-13 movies until you were in high school? Um, Only on the sly, you know? So I was one only of those Only on the kids. what? On the sly, like, you know. Oh, I thought you said the slide. I thought you, like, I imagined uh, these kids out yeah. at recess, like, watching no. PG-13 movies I, I mean, I guess movies that's not completely slide. fair. But, you know, sleepovers are where, you know, growing up, I watched, you know. And wait, I wasn't in high school. I was in middle school. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm dating myself. No, but anyways. Um, it's fine. I yeah. graduated. Uh, yeah, there you go. Do it was math. my senior year. <clears throat> uh, yeah, but who? I mean, I love the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and you know what? I love Johnny Depp. So I, I'm saying it. No holdbacks from this girl ever. Okay, and um, yeah, no, I think it's a great attraction. I think it's mostly for the adults. I think you get that nostalgia factor with the original mm-hmm. Pirates of the Caribbean. I think you, you know. Um, I think it's a great attraction. It's no. long. It's relaxing. Tiny bit of thrill. You can take I also the whole think it has adultness to it. Like right, inherent. Correct. Oh yeah. Adult. Like you know, yeah. there's the pirates, like the skeleton with the sword through the chest, uh, and they're uh, fighting, and they're like the women and the men uh, chasing each other. Hens for ten, and tens for hens, and all that. Oh, we don't talk about that anymore. So oh, but we talk about Johnny Depp just fine. Yeah. How come <laughs> you guys made faces about Johnny Depp? And um, I watched a Netflix special. Do you guys? I did. What Netflix Listen. special? What Netflix uh, special? Yeah, it, they did one uh, Johnny the versus Amber the trial. I'm. <gasps> well, I know what I'm watching tonight. I, yeah. That and Dark Shadows because that's a, that's Hannah's favorite uh, Johnny Depp movie. I, I don't. I mean, I no, but I love Johnny. Jo- yeah, no, I like Dark Shadows. Okay. That's okay, fine. so we know Hannah is Team Johnny. You, yes. Rhino, are Team Amber. Oh God, no! Sorry. Oh. <laughs> ah, <laughs> can answer that so what quickly. about you, Craig? Trying I'm not to saying I'm Team Johnny, seat. but I do not care. I don't. Okay, well, I plead the fifth. Yeah, okay. Happy well, uh, well, we know who to name for this. So, mm-hmm. okay, three yeses. Next, if we can't, I don't think we can talk about them all to this extent. And hopefully Johnny Depp and Amber don't come up for this next one. But I'll Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, three yeses. Oh, of course. It's the wildest it's ride, ride in, in the, the wilderness. wilderness. I did this for the first time when I was 18 years old, when I was here for my grad night, 2003. Love just that. before I saw Daniel Bedenfield. And right before, oh. there was an accident that caused some harm on it but it wasn't the oh, California it was Disneyland one. Yeah. yeah but on the news uh, when I thought I finally did it I finally started doing the roller coasters at Disney and I got home after my first plane ride ever and they were like Big Thunder Mountain causes <laughs> like I don't know yeah. I don't know that somebody died but somebody did get pretty badly yeah, hurt but they, like I just remember being like well that was a fun run I'm never doing these rides again uh, I have since gotten over that okay though. I gave this a yes as we all did but my particular in this is it's a yes for me at night at Walt Disney Ooh, World yes. in the oh, day yeah, it yeah, just yeah. does not hit that no, well no, for no. me uh, I if just frankly speaking on daytime only it's a no for me for a must do for adults but at mm. nighttime you feel like you're going faster you feel yeah. like there's some extra thrills on it I think it peaks at night and if the fireworks are going off oh, at the yes. same time Forget about ten it. Out of ten. Rip forget it, it forget and about stick it. it. <laughs> Rip it and stick it. Hey, uh, that kind of works only. with a stick of dynamite. Oh, that's true. Back row only on that one, too. Yeah, I agree with Ask you. Ask for the back Is row. there anything worse than when you get to Pirate to the Caribbean? Sorry, a Big Thunder Mountain <laughs> Railroad. Is there anything worse than when you get to Speaking Pirate to the Big Caribbean Thunder. and you see Johnny Depp? Is there anything worse it's than Big Thunder Mountain moment. Railroad when you go there and you watch the timing and you're like, okay, I'm definitely getting the back row. And then all of a sudden you get like stuck in the first or second row and you're like, oh. That didn't even line up. How did I get it? But Rhino likes that. He's like, it goes slower. It's nicer. <laughs> you hang over oh, the top. Yeah. <laughs> you hang. Yeah, you do. I, I don't. Uh, you just hang. Is he, you know, hanging? Um, the, the, I, I just think, I don't know. I always think the thrill rides, I'm always like, they always do tend to skew a little bit older, I think. So, but right. I just, I don't know. There's something. was well, campy too. Yeah. Like it's, I feel like it's kind of that mesh of Disney where it's like, you know, it's nostalgic. It's. You're like sliding into the yeah, person next to you. Right. You're just it was like, like maybe good for a date. Maybe you can yeah, Craig loves it when I ride with him. That's right. I know. I get left out of their dates all the time. That's I'll <laughs> leave that for another episode. No, 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 we'll talk about it in the Patreon post show. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, next one here, which I actually I wasn't positive we were going to get three yeses on it, but 
the haunted mansion. Mm. Yes, Queen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just how could it not, right? Well, it's spooky. Where's ghosts? I also think there is again that adult element to it because this yeah. also feels like from a, an era where, like Pirates of the Caribbean. I, I mean, I know that came later. Pirates Haunted City. Mansion came first, first at Walt Disney World. Yeah. No, but at, at Disney, in terms of the Pirates first at original. Disneyland, then Haunted Mansion, and then at Walt Disney World, Haunted Mansion was an opening day attraction, okay. and, and then Pirates came in 73. I just mean in terms of the development, just because it right. still does have that element of, like, we trust the audience. You know, it still is, it is macabre. There, It, it does, you know, it deals with death and ghosts yeah. and people having died i mean for god's sake we don't really sit and think about it too often but the lady in the attic has an axe and they're like she decapitated these five men and she's looking to find the next one and, the, and like sometimes i'm like you know we get so hung up on other things that i'm like there's a murderer on me. the loose i'm just very passionate <laughs> about this uh-huh. there's been a murder there's been a murder <laughs> in, in savannah <laughs> i'm not going down for this <laughs> I got that. Um, no, I, I think that's part of its like charm and appeal, you know. I also want to point out that both this and Pirates of the Caribbean, we put it on the adult list, and it's they're both dark ride attractions, and they're both original ideas. Mm-hmm. So I think we live in a world now where everything is – I mean, this is kind of like a broader discussion, but like everything is part of – a film franchise or it's you know thrill focus and we're voting yeah. these rides as adult rides because i think also we can appreciate as adults like the theming the animatronics the attention to detail like i don't think i i you know our kids necessarily noticing that maybe not so no. i think that Haunted Mansion would make it because adults need to get off their feet every now and then too. Yeah. And yeah. while they might find some of the uh, iconic, like all the icons inside mm-hmm. uh, of Haunted Mansion to be a little bit laughable, maybe like, like okay, that looks awful. Uh, at the same time too, it's mm-hmm. it's dark, it's quiet. You could close your eyes for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can snuggle up next to your other one. When we were going through the list with Rhino, his uh, main qualification for all of them was, could you make out with someone no, on it? No, I said, so, could you yeah. friend? Kiss. Could, could I said it a little oh. nicer than that. I don't but know. It was. I don't think so. On the Haunted Mansion, you don't think you could French kiss? No, I think you could. I'm just saying that like pirates French kissing. You can. You know. So I said no to pirates originally. Um, also, I will tell you <laughs> tell for the the people with back issues, when you do the... <laughs> When you get older, this is the thing. When you were climbing back, when you're going down the axe scene, that always like does a nice little adjustment oh, yeah. for me. You know, sometimes as an adult, you need that. I'm you know, still going to adjust that lumbar. Like to that scared me when I was a kid. I was just like, oh. this is the worst part. Um, as but an adult, though, you're like going to the chiropractor. You know, it's a good I time. just I feel like Haunted Mansion, like in terms of what it is, is still one of the best examples of the types of storytelling that Disney uses mm-hmm. in and throughout their parks. With like, you know, like the Pepper's Ghost with the with the yeah. um, Omnimover, you know, with all these things that it does. There's animatronics in there. These these like special effects, you know, there's these projections. It's all this stuff. And so it's like a culmination of where I would say that even if you're an adult, like because I originally did say no to Pirates of the Caribbean and I came back and I was like, no, you know what? I want to change mm-hmm. it to yes. Um, so but I think that I would put Honda Mansion before that. And then I do see um, in the chat that people are kind of being like, but what about the other stuff? Well, guess what? The next one on this list, Tron, Light Cycle Run, mm. 100%. Yeah. I definitely think that skews older than almost every single ride at the Magic Kingdom. I would agree. Yeah. Which is fine. I think it needs more rides yeah. like this. I, I'd argue it's the most mature ride mature. at Magic Kingdom. Uh, you know, mature. it's a bit mostly because of that launch. Uh, you know, I, Space Mountain might mess you up a little bit more, but oh. I think, I, I think, and I might be wrong on this or given a negative opinion, I think they need to lean in more to this Tron style and a little bit even more extreme than that. Yeah, I, I think, think, I I think yeah. Magic Kingdom think still needs more. It. And even something like Tiana's Bayou Adventure, when that opens up, that will absolutely be a must-do on the list. Mm-hmm. But that one drop in the little double drop in there, that's not doing it anymore in terms of in terms of thrills for me right. uh, you know i don't need to go all the way to velocicoaster like Ooh. at universal or yeah. you know even something like rock and roller coaster but give me an everest style roller coaster oh, at magic kingdom and 
and we're talking about a park that is now supreme in in so many ways. But I think Tron is like it's getting there. It's taking baby steps mm -hmm. in the right direction. I also forgot to say, when you agree with us, hit the thumbs up, and yeah, uh, that way we'll know that you're. But when you with don't us agree this, with us, don't hit, hit the, the thumbs yeah. down. Yeah, so. we only want <laughs> on the flip up, side yeah. of that. Yeah, <laughs> we need it for our egos. Um, Just the ups, baby. Yeah. Also, I wonder too. It's funny, like Tron. Obviously, you have like the movie series, which would I would argue skew older. Oh, for sure. Time I love I love Legacy Tron. Right. Legacy. So I almost think like that in itself, like you know, skews to maybe an older demographic who has like nostalgia vibes over that too. But well, which it, is interesting because a lot of people are like, "Oh, Tron! Like, who cares?" You know, Disney's like, we care. We're going to give you more Tron. Well, yeah. And now they're filming a third movie right. with Jared Leto. And no, thank you. I wanted I a sequel know. to the last movie, even yeah. though I guess this ultimately has to be. But nobody from the last two movies is in it. So I don't know how that's going to work. But yeah. anyway. Jared um, Leto. Not, not, not interested. Yeah, not for me. I get it. Not for me. Um, but I do think what's interesting, you've said it kind of twice now, is this like older skewing thing is like Pirates of the Caribbean now. 21 year old movie franchise Tron is a 30 plus year old movie franchise because the first one came out in the mid 80s uh, 80 before I was born I want to say like 82 so yeah. okay. uh, so we're talking over years. 40 yeah. yeah and so I'm like you know what I mean like these are franchises now that people have been birthed and have lived on this planet and so now they know nothing but those movies you know what I mean like so it's I think we can still have these adult oriented experiences built around what may seem like a younger skewing franchise. Now right. that people are older and willing to accept that these, you know, make it for everybody. It's mm -hmm. that generational thing we keep talking about that Disney has the edge on. Well, um, here's, but here's the other thing too. I've, I've got to yeah, throw it go in ahead. there. No, no, no. The movie movies aside with all of this, if you make a good ride or attraction, whatever, it doesn't matter if it's based on a good movie, you know, if it's just if it's fun or it tells a good story or if it's technologically innovative, that's all you need. Yeah. And Tron to right. me, it's yes, it's way too short. That launch is incredible. Everything inside is just kind of OK. Mm -hmm. But the launch kind of makes up for most of it that it's like it doesn't matter if you know the movies like the movies, uh, even the inside right. visuals with the, the effects and stuff. It, yeah. It's still cool. That's enough to take it. Disney needs cool to get soundtrack back too. Like, yeah, cool yeah. soundtrack. Disney needs to get back to thinking about those basics with it. How do we make it fun? Not how do we necessarily tie it in? If you can tie it into the IP, that's great. Just make a fun ride or a technologically innovative ride and everyone's going to come. And I think we have Agreed. one uh, coming up in one of our other parks that I think would hit all those things that you just spoke about. But maybe yeah. next up, Space Mountain. Three yeses across the board. I feel like um, honestly, along with Tron Light Cycle Run, Space Mountain, I think with the <laughs> current condition is one of the oldest, if not the oldest attraction, the skewing attraction at Walt right. Disney, uh, not Walt Disney World, at Magic Kingdom specifically, because, I mean, it's in the dark, it's stars, it's one, you know, one after the other, so you're a little more isolated, mm -hmm. you're not side by side, you're like you are, um, it's wait, we are side by side on the light cycle run, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. there's two, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm just like convincing myself otherwise, but, um, so I just think it's one of those where also it's so rickety. It, like when it takes those turns, I'm like, I'm going to be thrown from my life. And there's a part of me yeah. where I'm like, if I'm too big, my head's going to get chopped off. And if I'm too small, I'm thrown. So I'm, I'm like, right in that know because you get older and like Space Mountain's hard on you. you yeah, know? Like, it hurts. Like my parents will ride Space Mountain with me at Disneyland. They won't at Disney World because it's a different, um, the seats are different. Like, so I think that helps with like feeling like you're can't brace yourself for the turns or the drops but I think Space Mountain is that quintessential Disney thrill ride like if you were going to Disney World for the first time you're gonna be like well yeah I have to ride Space Mountain because it, it is just one one of those attractions and I do love how they have included in the holiday parties like I think you know the addition of the Halloween party the Christmas party those are awesome and I would even like to see more of that like I love when they do the Star Wars version at Disneyland um but I think it's a classic like how could you not include that in your you know I yeah. think it's a it's a rite of passage right right 
You well, know, it's agree. also about what seat you sit in too. There are better seats than other seats. Like, Which don't, seat is don't the best go in. Seat? In my opinion, I do like row one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't fit in it the best because I have long legs. But when you are in that front row, I feel like you can kind of you can see the best, so you yeah. know how to lean in with the turns, and that helps take a lot off the the pressure and pain. Uh, I used to enjoy sitting in like a uh, seat four, so uh, the the next front row of the the second car but to me now that it's it's a little on the wild side anything yeah. in the back four through six is a little too rough so i'm gonna say one's the best i'll deal I, with it's two scarier three too well. because there's nothing in front of you and so it's not like you know what i mean yeah. like when you come up over that bend and you start to do it i'm i'm still like a little there's a little feeling in my yeah tummy. especially with like the lights out when they do that for mm -hmm. halloween that's but it's a good time well I think there's going to be some feelings had about our next one, which is the people mover. And guess what? Mm. This one's not unanimous. There were two yeses, one no. Who was the one no? Um, I was. The one who didn't what? agree with the French kissing rule that I had set aside. I was. Oh and God. you know what? He refuses to kiss me. I'm the one who it's even <laughs> I came up with the whole crap Party of pooper. adults need stuff to just take some time off from their feet that and is absolutely relax. Mover. I think, you know, I some... I think Disney people still get the people mover. I think about the people who are coming for the first time, not really in love with Disney, don't know much about it. Yeah. And I fear that they get on this thing because every single vlogger, podcast person out there says, you got to do the people mover. It is the greatest. And then they get off and they say, what? was that a no, 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 slow no, 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 no. moving trip around the worst you get great land castle views yeah you get one. like you get I like, one I like being above the land too because yeah. it's, it's like unique in that it's perspective. the worst land it's the worst <laughs> okay. land i didn't say what land. Land. Yeah. i mean i would agree with that so I'll, I'll meet you in the middle there um but no i i how could you not because you can take a break you can almost <laughs> take a nap in it um, you get to go through Space Mountain, which we just agreed. Yeah, it's was a unique perspective adults. of attractions. Yeah, and sometimes and the lights Buzz are Light on. Year. Buzz Lightyear, yeah, which meh, I didn't vote for those. All right, well, whatever. I know. <laughs> um, no, I just feel like you are doing yourself a disservice by not going on the People Mover. Also, even when the line's long, it moves pretty quick. So, like, can you really be disappointed no, after it waiting? No, it does not move quick okay. anymore. I am sorry. I we mean, are not living. We are not living pre-pandemic anymore. When the people mover was constantly okay, a five-minute wait, and that girl, every time, it's better than waiting for Buzz Lightyear. Every time I you wait, think any adults 15, gonna wait? Every time I no. wait fifteen minutes for that attraction, I am saying to myself, "This has now made it to the point where it's no longer worth it." So, did you vote it. for Buzz Lightyear? You bet I did. Because you know what? <laughs> Wait, you, Adults, did, you said yes for Buzz Lightyear? I said yeah, yes so for Buzz Lightyear. Oh, and I'm he confused. likes the Disney World one better than Disneyland, too, which is wild to me. That is wild to me I as like well. the Disneyland one way but better. But I can't believe, as an adult, you're fine with waiting in line for that. That one always has a long line. And it smells like someone smuggling diapers. It always. Does. So for Buzz Lightyear, for me... It's about the fact that I can now challenge the people I'm with. I can I can fight against them actively. And yes, I prefer the Walt Disney World version because Disneyland, you can pick it up and you can get like the perfect aim and all that. Walt Disney World, you have to work with their parameters <laughs> that absolutely <laughs> suck. So, and I know Steve Porter, if he's the in here, I was he's going to back me up Steve. on this. He's going to back me up. If, yeah, but that's not fair. He worked there, so yes, he knows correct. that he, he does knows know it. Too much. But that's the thing: if you can master it when you don't have the ability to pick it up, then that means you are better than when you have that extra ability to pick it up and do whatever you want with wow, it. Wow, this is validation for. So, um, yeah, Craig. I'm I'm <laughs> sorry. It's it's more challenging when you have to work with restrictions. My opinion. That's all that matters. Well, and if you don't agree, I know. Would you like to you hold hands with me and agree, write the people? Yeah. Never you seen. can rip Here's it and stick it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is a multifaceted <laughs> saying. Here we go. Um, what the font is that going to be in? I think like a like a rock star, like a, curls. like a concert. Curls with a Z. Oh, you guys remember that? Um, I, <laughs> it might have to just be Comic Sans. Comic oh, Sans. Comic Sans. Might have to be Windings. Um, <laughs> did, you windings. Just, did you just say the F word? No, I said friggin'. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. Not here. Not on this show. But I would in real life. But um, anyway. Oh, cool. <laughs> Tell me, little kid. Young young adult. How do you swear? How do you swear? Oh, <laughs> um. 
What was I going to say? Uh, so the thing with the people mover for me, I, I am one of those where I'm like, okay, it's somebody's first trip to Disney. You know, is that really one you're going to waste time with? No, I don't think so. But at the same time, I do love, especially when it's like hot or whatever, like yes. you're up there, like the breeze is blowing through. Yeah. You're able to sit for a second and kind of recollect yourself and look out at the day. And then, you know, when you're in dark space, you know, whatever happens, happens. Like, I'm not, that, not to say that I have ever like, made out on yeah. that because I have not. <laughs> Keep it um, but I'm just saying, if I were to shoot a date night movie mm-hmm. in the Magic Kingdom, the mm-hmm. couple would have a conversation on the People Mover. And in fact, I did do a prototype of an original idea, I, not an original idea, of an idea I had had to do for this channel years ago with Steve and Michaela. And oh, yeah. If you're a Patreon supporter, you can dig back through it. But it was like a QA and a where people submitted questions and then they read them back and forth to each other. And they only had the time of the one people mover ride to answer. Did they it. do it? Yeah, and it was Aww. good. It came out. I had to ride it like three times because yeah, I had to have the shots cut away too and stuff. That's but, how um, they met. So yeah, they had Very a cool. lack of chemistry. Oh my god! I don't think they're going to end like up together. <laughs> <laughs> Craig's a couple seasons behind. Uh, uh, so we yeah. got one more on this list. One more for the Magic Kingdom, and guess what? Happily ever after the nighttime show. Three yeses, even from Mr. Whoa. Craig Williams, who hates it. Yeah, it's not my favorite show, but ultimately, I think there Wait, is, is something. what is your favorite nighttime show at Disney? A favorite nighttime show at Disney? Oh, gosh. Right now, I guess it. Oh, man. Of the three shows, I Abra-Kadabra. guess it would have to be. It oh, would have to be Happily <laughs> Ever After. Gee. Because okay. I'm, I, my mind has changed on Luminous even more in a bad direction. Yeah, and Fantasmic, great. it's, I, we'll see what we say when we get there, but I'm going to leave that off. Right now, for me, Happily Happily ever after, mm-hmm. as much as I think it needs to be retired, it, it's something what? about Not fireworks. Yet. Shut right, up! It it's back. my opinion. <laughs> I'm allowed to have my we can't opinion. Get anything better than happily ever I, after? My opinion, I need it's, it. Now. It's just, you know, there is something special about fireworks at Walt Disney World and uh, at Magic Kingdom in particular. And happily ever after does deliver everything you want from it. If you're like a casual fireworks person. Uh, even as an adult, and you only like see it during baseball games on fireworks night. I'll tell you what, Fourth of July, baby. Fourth of July. I've never heard of it. Oh, Sorry, well, you, I'm, you never heard of Fourth of July. I've never have. No, uh, Fifth of communist? November is my uh, is my <laughs> oh, yeah. fireworks so, day. Well, remember, oh, remember, it's got to catch your phrase. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. but anywho, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's enough to like be like, okay, I get fireworks now when you can see them done right in a Disney show. I also feel like it kind of like is sort of for the adults because they have some like 90s Disney movie throwback songs in it. So they have new movies in it too, but I feel like it also like, you know, pays it, homage it's the under, to the underrated ones are yeah. in there. You know what I mean? Like Hunchback and Hunchback, stuff. Hunchback, man. Yeah. You, I, I will cry every time I hear a Hunchback song. We need more Hunchback. You are deformed. <laughs> and you are deformed. ugly. I am deformed <laughs> and I am ugly. See, I'm crying it's right It's got now. a great meaning to it that song. It hits with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we watched a TikTok. Uh, was it even a TikTok or was it a Vine? It was, that's I don't know. Fine. And it was one of these videos. Dating ourselves But it was again. like... Uh, a picture of a uh, like a beautiful like uh, Easter <laughs> cupcake with like a little um, what are those <laughs> yeah. marshmallow birds on it? Uh, Peep. The peeps. The yeah. peep. Yeah. And then the other one had like gotten <laughs> melted or something. Buzz. Just watched it in their living room one day for like 20 minutes laughing hysterically. <laughs> so uh, no alcohol or any other substances were involved either. I was just yeah. giggling like an idiot. Um, but uh, uh, here's the thing works. about Happily Ever After. <laughs> Just really quick before we move on nighttime shows. I have never met anyone in my life who is so analytical over fireworks as Craig Williams is. Oh, because is he is very, he. I feel like he takes this, the elements separately. So if you're using yeah. the fireworks, he, it's fireworks. And if it's projection, that's one thing. Because he likes Mickey's Mixed Magic at Disneyland uh, too, which yeah. sometimes has fireworks. And right. I agree. I think with a show that doesn't have fireworks, you could be projecting that multiple times over the night and stuff right. like that. But... It's funny because I, for me, happily ever after must do because where else are you going to watch a projection mapping fireworks show like that? You know what I mean? That's yeah. one of those things you're like, only at Disney. Yeah. Well, I guess also the castle at Hogwarts, that's the Universal what Studios, but that's fine. Uh. A dog with shoes. Only at only Disney. At Disney. <laughs> um, okay, we're moving on to another park, and this one has a lot of stuff, so we're going to have to move through it really quick. Epcot. We've got <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. I feel like it's pretty obvious that that is... I would argue one of the right now, if not the most like a must. For me, do. it's the best ride at Disney right now. Period. Yeah. Uh, not the best ride at Disney, what but I do ride? think Rise I do. of Resistance. Rise, yeah, of, Rise of, of Resistance. Still, yeah. Rise easily, of Resistance. easily. Yeah. But 
For sure. but wait for you too, Ryan. A hundred percent because it's it's more accessible in terms yeah. of like rideability. People with motion sickness, people with whatever you know, yeah. like it's a whole across the board. Plus, right. it tells we'll a talk, longer story and it's innovative. We'll talk about it then. But I do. I think just like that you guys said that. Thank you. It's it's tough though. I mean, it it could easily on any day of the week I could decide like no, I don't want to dedicate the time you wait in line for Rise of the Resistance and then thirty minutes to that. However, mm-hmm. with I mean, you could also argue the same with Cosmic Rewind. What stops me from there the amount of pre-shows the Uh, greatest the best roller coaster at Walt Disney World hands down is Cosmic Rewind but I don't want to see Terry Crews anymore I'm done of going in a room does anyone know what they call themselves and everyone starts yelling it out and I'm like He's not talking to us. He's talking in the room. It's just, like, I don't even. It's, it's like a weird, awkward it's moment. It's just yeah. so long. And I'm it's on? great. Like the you got to tell me when I'm on. It's great the first two <laughs> times. And then it's like, it doesn't really serve any purpose. I mean, it does have a little bit of storytelling in there. But you could accomplish the same thing Blaine in close. a quick cue video that's playing up above. Like, hey, the Guardians need your help. This Elron is coming after. What's his name? Uh, Elron oh. Hubbard. What is yeah. it? Scientology his, his name is coming is after everyone. The big, like, the big uh, Titan or whatever it's called. He is like uh, his name's like Elron or Ensign or something. Eternal. Thank you. Oh, I love. Well, he's not an eternal. Like, he's um. What, he's a. Uh, he's a uh, uh, shoot. Listen, I've been watching Monarch all night, so I've got Titan. Uh, no, 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 no spoilers. So I feel like you just proved, like, I feel like every time I ride um, Guardians now, like, you can tell, like, everybody's written it, everybody's seen the pre-show, because everybody knows exactly where the door is, and they line up as close to the door as possible, and you can tell people... Sorry, uh, Celestia, you're right. Okay, yep. see, but then that proves the other thing, where it's like, the storyline is nope. like, eh, Deviants. Right. Celestials are the good guys. I'm so sorry, oh, I'm sorry. I well, um, wait, are we terrible. talking about Guardians, or... Yeah, yeah but in, so in Guardians, the main, the main thing that's like... Grabbing yeah, the like engine or whatever. That's one of the things galaxy. that is being made in the Eternals. Uh, so it's like the thing that's like coming through the planet. It's like whatever Galactus is. If you could make things. it through the but end the of that movie, fact that then we you don't saw even it. Also, know. why is no one talking about the fact that there's a giant hand coming through the Earth anywhere in the MCU? Because most people didn't watch that movie and they clearly Correct. tried to erase it from existence. Thank Would you. Agree. Back to you, Craig. Um, <laughs> I like roller coasters, and it's a good roller coaster, and it spins rider? you around. And a rail I like that time, I, you know, back in my hobo days. Um, we don't use that word anymore, I don't think. <laughs> Do we? I think that's one of the ones where we're like, eh. I don't know. Well, please let us know. I'm sure you will. Let us but know in the here comments. Here we are. We're back below. to the gypsy thing Fine. all over again. Well, oh. I know that one for sure, but you know, I'm we'll, not we'll part find of out this later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be. <laughs> I feel like it's a rite of passage at the Diz. Someone comes in and, and says something. You'll have a word. So, yeah. Oh, she's from Louisiana. She's going to find a word. <laughs> I'm from Mississippi, which is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> she's from. And you know it's true. Yeah. Um. Good ride. That's great, right? I feel like we were on track to say something, but we just kept cutting each other no, off just, and we missed it. I think I just think you can't dispute it. Okay. Game over. So using hobo as a description may be oh, factual, no. but using it by itself, hobo is not a negative word if used objectively. So Oh my gosh. There's what a beer called Lord mean? Hobo that I like in Massachusetts. I just love that they're like, if you use it objectively, it's fine. I don't so know, but I just want to chime in before mind. the rest of the internet does. You're welcome. You're What's our next ride? Um, <laughs> well, like I said, we have a lot to go through at Epcot here. So Epcot. once this Epcot. uh, Epcotians, Epcotians. Mm-hmm. people of Epcot. Um, also, isn't a hobo somebody with a stick in the handkerchief? Oh my God. Can we move on? Okay. Like Can we rip clowns? it and stick it? Soren. Soren. Three S's. We don't need to psychoanalyze every one of these attractions, but I just think it's nice. I think it's yeah. one of those things where like. Adults might get more out of it than kids. I would I agree. Know. I think in this day and age, too. Yeah. I, I To me, this is like a PBS movie that you get to ride out. Mm. And so it's very adult in that way. Yeah. That's all I have to all say All right. About that. The <laughs> next one, which is our final attraction at Epcot, our final thing at Epcot, period. <laughs> what? Grand Fiesta Tour, which I did not agree with. So that only has two yeses. I said that of all the attractions here, I was like, I, this doesn't. This doesn't give me anything. I think you described it better, Craig, when we were talking about it. Uh, I described it as a yes for me because if you're going on Grand Fiesta Tour as an adult, uh, you know, maybe you don't drink. But for the ones that do, most likely you're going on Grand Fiesta Tour after having a couple drinks, after having a margarita. And when you go into Grand Fiesta Tour with that state of mind, 
uh, it just it changes you as a person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, you you consider you just consider the attraction in a complete different light. And so that's how I experience Grand Fiesta Tour. So okay. I'm going to say as an adult, it works for that. Uh, same for me, Double. Um, yeah, I feel like you, I don't know, you can't not enjoy it that way. I mean, you can, but that's how I like to enjoy it. Also, the positioning of uh, Mexico, I and I know this is very where you start. debate. It is where you start, but you also can end there. Um, no. So it's like right there. You could you could do both. You no. could go twice. In oh, a day. two circles. Sometimes you need Grand Fiesta Tour to, yep. you know, be able to then mosey on your way or, or whatever. But no, I love it. It's uh, got that nostalgia factor again. I love that like Disney water smell. And it reminds me of like the good old days at Epcot. Um, also, you, you, which, am I not allowed to say that? No, you can. Yeah, you can. I don't care. But don't it know. just, you know, it's kind of like musty. Know. It's um, it's a, and it the does musty have days at Epcot. I do. I mean, you know, it's got the three caballeros, which yeah. is, I don't know, maybe... I, you love Donald. We get it. I you love, love Daisy. She's trash. I do love Donald. She's trash. Daisy's not even in that ride. So why didn't you vote for it? We should have another episode where we're all like character versus character and we just debate. Just like a brawl. I mm. mean, I would brawl over Daisy. You can Daisy go ahead and wear that too. Daisy sweater. I know you got waiting for it. Anyway. And a t-shirt and ear. Okay. Well, let me guys, let, let me, let me stomach. ask you both this question. You then. start in Canada because the last thing you ever want to no. do is end the day with a La Fin du Monde. The, the, the beer that means the end of the world. The beer, the thing you it is end so on? gross. I will fight this to the like end of the earth. I've Le Fin du Monde is for people I have one at who my house lack right taste now. buds. How wow. dare you, sir? You just think you're okay, fancy so saying Le Fin du Monde. Wait, 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 wait. Actually, so I made my no, statement. I actually do start in Canada. <laughs> start in Canada, time. baby. And actually, no, the, okay, saying. I, I see that it's hard to st like, end your day with tequila. I get that. But, um, I mean, I love starting at Rose and Crown. I don't even stop in Canada. Sorry, Canada. I don't even go but to Rose and Crown. I feel like I'm above it. Really? Life, yeah. I like Rose and Crown. And then, like, I you usually what get whatever slush that they is? have, which we got Flower Morocco. Garden coming up. Morocco really? is the better bar than Rose and Crown. I'll say it to the end time because nobody's there. Uh, and they don't know when you can go in there and you can go get some well, What are you double. ordering at? Double um, whatever you want. The same things you can get at Rose and Crown. What are you ordering at Rose and Crown? I get a snake bite. Okay, well, then never mind. You can't get that there. Right. Gotta get a snake bite with black currant on top. Yeah. Are you? Oh, when's the last time you or got one of those? Um, or black velvet. A Pim's cup. They don't have those. Yeah. They don't have that. You okay? Well, I, pretty much. I stand corrected. Pretty much anymore. I get a harp. Kylie yeah, still always does again. the snake bite with mm -hmm. black currant on top. That's when I would go there with all the the Brit kids that I worked with at Harry Potter. That was like the go-to drink that you would get, oh, you and it is delicious. British, right? uh, well, we we were American, but they would bring over for like the first couple of years. They brought over British kids to work there, so that way uh, it felt a little bit more authentic. We, you're not British. You know, <laughs> I do celebrate the fifth of November. I guess I already remember, said that. Remember, well, you remember, remember. Look like Oliver, so I don't know, like Oliver. Uh, more soup, Twist? please. Right, well, yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> so hungry. More, please. Can I have Stay some hungry. more? I stole All your right. change right out your luggage. Uh, yummy, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no. Okay. Why this ride, though, and not other rides was the question I was trying to ask before we got into Wait, this. Wait, what's the show about today? I can do today? this because Frozen one? has too long, of a ride, too long of a line, and so does Ratatouille. And Ratatouille is like, you know, you got to put on the goggles. All right, what about it's like Canada? Whole thing. You got to stand what up What about French? That. Yeah, I mean, whatever that a, ride is. No, I want to. I want to do a dark ride through the water. I'm just saying, right. I voted Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. I was the only one who said you yes did. to that. No, you I, monsters! It makes me. It makes me. It, it, I do feel like mm -hmm. it. I mean, you want to drink a margarita and then go on Ratatouille. I know right Ratatouille. Yeah. It's like oh I feel gosh. like it makes people more nauseous than right. Guardians. Correct. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Grow up. <laughs> I've got. Uh, well, I take my Dramamine and then I'll be real sleepy. Okay, that's it for Epcot. Bye, Epcot. You're the worst park. <laughs> um, so do we all agree, though, really quick, that Epcot is the most adult park? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Big Daddy. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe because it's so food and drink oriented. Oh, she's leaving. Um, okay. We are going to move on to Disney's Hollywood Studios. <laughs> She's gone. I think completely. Hannah was trying to have a coughing fit, and so she felt embarrassed, so she oh. ran out of the room. And uh, it, it's such a large room that it took her a few minutes to get out of. So, 
She could have just went in the office and closed the door. Yeah, I don't think she knew that. Yet, no. So it's fine. Anyway, we hope she. Uh, we send her our best wishes. And, Thoughts and prayers. Uh, yeah. So anyway, Disney's Hollywood Studios, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Nothing was two yeses. I was the one dissent because. I do think this is a fun attraction. I think it's great. But if we're talking about like you're adults and you're coming. I don't know. I don't know. I just I don't I don't know. Like, I feel like there's going to be an aversion to being like, oh, this Mickey, Mickey and Minnie. Yeah, because like, there, that's for kids. If that's there's whatever. one thing that people know is that adults don't like Mickey Mice. and Minnie. That's for oh, sure. I know why. It's because Daisy's on that attraction. I didn't. She's Hannah, the star. How do you feel about Mickey Mouse? I love Mickey Mouse. Um, th- you mean this guy right hey, here? Hey, no. I'm wearing a Mickey Mouse shirt, too. You stop yeah. right here. So then right here's here. the thing. You were like, well, maybe um, I don't adults think coming adults care to about Disney Mouse. Like, care about Mickey Mouse. But, like, aren't you, if you're coming, especially if you're coming to Disney as a Disney adult, maybe sans kids, I think you have to like Mickey Mouse. I think that's part of it. What? Question, really quick. Can we talk about Great Movie Ride? No, no, no. That's what Baseline Tap House is for, and that's where we did talk about Great Movie Ride. Or a plug, 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 plug. Yeah, subtle plug. Mm-hmm. Uh, great Movie Ride's over. It's gone. It's done. <sighs> Let it go. TCM is always there for you. Great Movie Ride doesn't need to be. No, ri- no attraction in the history of theme parks has ever been rebuilt. I lied. One, <laughs> Kong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. They brought oh. they made a King Kong attraction You're again right. after they destroyed their other ones. So. All I'm saying, listen, I love the movies. <laughs> Great movie ride introduced me to my deeper appreciation for movies. Who even though I you to the TCM no. wine club. Yeah, He'll I'm, all die on me. bad choice of movies for the attraction. <laughs> Didn't think the attraction wasn't worth it. I just think they it needed to better it. movies. Yeah. I think they should have updated it and I think they should have put Mickey and Minnie somewhere else. I also think I Mickey and that. Minnie's at Disneyland with uh Toontown is spectacular. Oh, their yeah, their queue is so good. Their I know. So good. Like I yeah, I well that's always my beef. Okay, I I'm like going down a rabbit hole here, but like that's my beef with Disney. Like why you got to get rid Rabbit hole? Yeah, maybe. I didn't care for that. No, <laughs> I me thought either. I meant it because it's like Toontown over there, and if you don't I know, know what I'm talking about, now it just sounds like I'm talking about Roger Rabbit's hole. That's true. Um, yeah, no, a I hole? Think... Doesn't he have the hole? He throws in the wall. I am digging this uh, hole deeper. Deep deep Can you just stop saying hole? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to being friends with me. I am so sorry. You know what, it. Ryan? In that shirt, you're a hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> How does he golf? <laughs> what was that? Just putt then. Just putt. Everyone knows how to putt. You've gone miniature golfing. All right, whatever. So we said yes. (laughs) (laughs) Because Um, it is a yes. Adults will like it and they should do it. I do. You know, it's one of those ones where it was a soft no, but I I could be persuaded to give it a firmer Mm. yes. Okay, stop. (laughs) What? No, you're just thinking it. Muppet Vision 3D. 3D. I am shocked by the dissenter in this one. It's Mm -hmm. Craig. It was me. He yeah. says no. <laughs> I said no to Muppet Vision 3D. I think, I, it's, I think it's got <laughs> adult jokes in it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there is. I just think that for me, it, again, this list is the must-dos. And yes, I, I do think Hollywood Studios suffers in the amount of longer attractions to, for adults to get off their feet. I, I think that's why they still need a, a proper dark ride in Hollywood Studios. A mm-hmm. nice, a nice, good, you know, ten minute ride like the Haunted Mansion, or, like or, great movie ride. or and it's done. It's <laughs> over. Get over never it. Never say never. And uh, so Muppet Vision 3D, I guess, can fill that. But I mean, at the same time, too, I'm not going to lie, sit here and say it's for everyone. I mean, it's it's not for everyone. The Muppets, I feel like, is a fine wine. You either get it oh, and you enjoy wine. it or yeah wine that or kids you're can't just drink like, oh, so i think it's right. an adult must do hmm, good point <laughs> i mean wined. it's been wined right by baseline tap house i mean it's a great like can you bring a drink in there or no no open containers i don't no, think. i don't think so yeah. but i mean mm. still I you know you. I how to make i it. mean they can say no but <laughs> yeah they can say sir yeah finish the drink before you come inside and I go oh my god and i'm so okay. sorry so I you know where you can take drinks into is the frozen ever after show no streets of america those are gone you sure can. The, I'm not over that either. You can bring a drink into Frozen Ever After. I mean, I did not. You know mean that. Frozen <laughs> Sing Along? Sing Along, yeah. correct. Probably not on the ride, <laughs> but <laughs> on the Sing Along. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, which if that was the case, that definitely wouldn't have been on my list for Epcot. But no, I think also Muppets like for adults. That's nostalgia too. Like we grew up 
ish with the Muppets, you know, and also God bless Disney for keeping some like original stuff mm-hmm. at studios. Like that attraction just makes me so happy. It reminds me of the good old days of when they had the it back at Disneyland. Lot. Yeah. Cause well, the video you see is actually from Disney. Yes. Correct. Yeah. But it, it also is like straight up from the eighties, which is just like, yeah. I love, I love that. The people peeking in and you're like, what's the other part of this wall? Where but is that? But you know what? We <laughs> have <laughs> almost come full circle because those clothes, those fashions are coming back in. Oh it my almost God. could be today. I'm not even kidding you guys. I stopped at American Eagle before this because surprise, surprise, I wore a hole into my pants because my thighs are too thick. And I um, went to go get new ones. I made an audible noise in the store where they were like, is that old man okay? Because I, the whole front of the store, it's boot cut jeans. Yeah. And then the uh-huh. back of the store was uh, mm. carpenter jeans. And I was like, what? Man, I can't do it. What guys. nightmarish thing am I in? Is I, this 2000? Just go to Target. Go to Target. No, Target I is can't. wild. I, that means I would have had a full vintage closet because I feel like that yeah. was all my jeans you got a little, that uh, I saved like still from high school. You got oh, a little. Oh, I got, got, got fluffy oh, up on top. Oh, up there. Yeah, you got a little. <laughs> You know what they say, the higher the hair, the closer Jesus. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's a thing in the South. You know, you gotta get your your poof. So. All right, guys, we can't keep talking about each attraction as much as we have been because we still have another park and it's it's like two o'clock. So. Daddy wants his Taco Bell. Yeah. I know. I've been thinking about Taco Taco Bell Bell all day. All right. Rise of the Resistance. I think this kind of goes without too much to say. This is, we, Craig and I have said it, whether Hannah agrees or not. I agree. It is definitely one of the like must do attraction at Walt Disney World because it just has cutting edge technology. The it's way got it storytelling. The story. It's got a giant fish man. Kylo Ren. It's got multiple locations. How brave! It's got oh my god, that's another random trick. arms sticking out of nowhere, <laughs> just like How shooting brave. guns. It's uh, blasters. Sorry. Don't do blasters. Oh, this one. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love the animatronic arm that comes out. But it's got multi floor, two floors of, of craziness, yeah. you know? It's like multiple rides in one, and I don't think we've ever seen that with Disney. And who knows if we'll ever see it again. So Yeah. I don't think we will. So I Although, mean if they build a new avatar attraction, if they keep going based off the length I, of the movies, they'll have that to. attraction will be a whole day. It'll just be yeah. not it won't be one theme park, it'll be one attraction. <laughs> Oh, at a geez. theme park that is about eight hours long. I'm going to vote no on that. So um, Slink a dog dash. Slink hang a dog on. dash. Hang on. I think it's a yes. I might I mean, be it's old, a fun... but I still got a little spring in my step. Slinky dog. Quote. End quote. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just did it. No, I think it's fun. And I think that, like, also adults love Toy Story, you know? Came yeah. out in the 90s. 1995. So... Was it? Oh, it was the 80s. Was it? Girl, I just said 1995. Oh, I thought you said 85. I was like, am I going crazy? No. Um, evidently, I am. But yeah, no, it's a 90s classic. People have that emotional connection to Toy Story. It's fun. It, tiny it, bit thrilling. If we said yes to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, you have to say yes to Slinky okay, Dog Dash. That's so they're the same argument. intensity, yeah. in my opinion. It's just one you don't realize is like... You know, one hides in the mountains to think that it's actually thrilling. This one is just bare exposed for you to realize yeah. it. It's not that yeah. bad, but you know what? But it's got that got like a little fun bit. little curve drop. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. It's we were like, wow, this is a lot higher than it looked on yeah. the ground. Like, um, also, my two year old's almost tall enough to ride it, and I am I going to throw him on it as soon as he is? Absolutely. It is one of those attractions that mm-hmm. is really sad that it got a piece of it got cut out. You know oh, that it was supposed to be just a little bit longer because yeah. it is one of those rides you're like, man. This would have definitely been worth that extra couple of like 10 seconds on here. But yeah, um, also in Toy Story Land, we have Toy Story Mania, which I think is a fun game for anybody. I too. Yeah, Right back to the Buzz Lightyear argument. It's fun to compete with each other in Toy Story. Yeah, I didn't vote for Buzz Lightyear. You guys are both monsters. But (laughs) I we circle back around to this one where it's fun to compete with people. It's fun to work together and compete. But you know at the what I like time. too? Yeah, I was going to say right. is I like that when you work together and you you like can be like start to learn the secrets to open up the yeah. new screens and things like that. And that's Even always a so. fun like and trying to get it in that time frame. So it's like a fun, you know, it, it's like the company shirts that I had to get rid of because they no longer fit me. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's what Did they you say. donate them or burn them or throw them in a? Uh, he, yeah, John you? forced me to burn them. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so. um, well, also, um, we've got, uh, I'm just going to lump them together. Two more attractions that were both yeses. 
Rock and Roller Coaster, and Tower of Terror. I mean, duh. I think they go without saying that those are both very adult, older-oriented skewing attractions yeah. for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, Aerosmith with that that sixty mile an hour <laughs> launch, like you, <laughs> it, that, it's. <laughs> It's great for it's great for use out there too, but at the same time, you know they're afraid. They see that they see Disney's that limo only go upside down roller coaster jetting off, I know. and they're like, "Where is Such it going?" Such a great it's like roller coaster, scary. like still one of my favorites. Also, I think you have to be an adult to know who Aerosmith is at this point. Oh, when was the last time they had a hit? Um, I'm not being to be rude, but they're not active. Are they actively so making new music, or are they just like I in that retirement phase? No, I think the last there. album they did was just push play, honking on Bobo, maybe one of those two. So it was not why, yeah, it's been, yeah, like it's been years. They've been riding their greatest yeah. hits for a long time. But I mean, you could argue the same thing of that's Twilight why. Zone Tower of Terror. Yes, you know Jordan Peele tried to bring it back, but this is based on the original series. So uh, you have, but I mean, it's it's kind of come and gone throughout the years. You had the the 80s TV show. Yeah, you the, had the uh, the classic movie that is not scarred for being an absolute disaster and then the original series. I think it's just You're forgetting a movie it's too. Fine. You're forgetting the Gutenberg one. Steve oh, Gutenberg, Kirsten Dunst. There's a there's oh, a Oh yes. 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 <laughs> you mean the one that's actually based on the attraction. Yeah. The attraction. <laughs> Why is that not on Disney Plus? Why? Is it not? No, it's, it's not. not. Well, that's a shame to Gutenberg. Yeah, and the wild thing is they sold the DVD in the store for like the longest, longest oh, yeah, time. It. So it's come weird. over for a watch party. I got is, it. is Scarlett Johansson still working on the new version of the movie? Oh no, I don't think I don't so. Know. I think yeah, I don't crap. think so. Wait, did something happen with her and Disney? No. No, they I got think. to get they were they made up and they're still okay. gonna work on stuff in the future, they said. Okay. Mm. Yeah. They shook hands. She didn't she, like she didn't like JPEG. She should be a Disney uh, legend at this point. Why? What else has she done? Uh she was one of the voices in the jungle book. Uh that's right. They okay. killed her character in a Marvel movie. Well, spoiler alert to that. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Spoiler alert for a five-year-old movie? Come on. <laughs> um, really no, but quick, do you guys think they're going to get rid of Aerosmith on Rock and Roller Coaster? I think eventually they're going to have to retheme it. How, how soon we think? Uh, mm. I, my guess is with the current state of the way things are, I think later than sooner. Yeah. I, I think it's agree. a low priority where they're like, eh. I think yeah. it comes down to being like, in the surveys that people fill out, and I know this is part of it too, is that sure. like people still enjoy the actual attraction. Right. And I think if we still have a ride like Journey into Imagination, then I think we're that the exciting ride that still is fulfilling, mm -hmm. whether you know Aerosmith or not, is on there. And again, it's like it's not really like much of it has to be rethemed. So I don't know. Right. I true. mean, I, I think it would be fun, but it could also I don't know. At the same time, now I'm having this conversation with myself. It could be one of those things where it doesn't cost a ton of money to retheme right. that that much. So, like, it couldn't be that hard. But I'm still, yeah. still pulling for that goofy I, movie. I'd, I'd mm -hmm. rather have Electric Mayhem. But I think if it's one gone. of the members... It was canceled. I think if one of the members of Aerosmith dies, they'll probably use that as an excuse to fast track getting oh, rid of it. I don't know. So. That might slow it down, right? I would say fast track it and be like, okay, we don't, we want to be respectful to the family and not have their... Their dead relative in here. What if Ken Marino it bites week, it? So. He's at the keyboard. He's at the sound mixing. Don't you say that about Ken Marino. Know, Ken Marino. Charm. Um, <laughs> so Tower of Terror obviously has that horror element too. So that's the other part I of just, that too. I like, love yeah. Tower of Terror. Like that is one of my favorite attractions. And I love Guardians out at DCA. Yeah. But like Tower of Terror just like has my heart. I love it. I want to live there. It's well, 13 floors of excitement. Come yeah, on. I know. It Not every floor can be a winner. It inspired <laughs> one of the greatest SNL sketches of all time. Yeah. You have to say Any that. Any questions? Yep. Any questions? <laughs> uh, I also think um, it's one of those like <laughs> automatically it's one of, you know, so many people like who, 21 and older are just always like, why isn't there a bar associated with this? So it gives oh. that. It, it, it or a hotel. How long have we been talking about hotel? Time. Hey. That's with what they're going to turn the Star Wars hotel into, right? Regardless, you <laughs> have to kidding. say Tower Starting of that Terror. Now. That's I mean, Amore. It's, it's right outside. It's right there. That's We're not true. making that Amore shirts. We're Rip making that Amore shirts. Um, okay, the final one at Hollywood Studios, Phantasmic. Yeah, I think whether you've seen the Disneyland one or not, which you can't see right now, um, I think Phantasmic, like I remember the first time I saw it still, and I think it is just like, one of those nighttime spectaculars, again, that you're not going to get anywhere except for like Walt Disney World. It's, it's my favorite really cool. nighttime spectacular. I, I'd argue that you can enjoy it more as an adult than a kid. Absolutely. Even. I, as a kid, I saw it and I was like, it's too long, too much sitting. As an adult, I watch it and I'm like, it, it knows how to hit the uh -huh. beats. It has a great selection of different movies to pull from. It knows the pacing of the show. And 
it doesn't matter if Mickey's popping out of the top of a house or a mountain. When he comes out and he starts just freaking aiming I mean, those fireworks everywhere, you're like, come on, stick right, it. I know. I'm not saying I'm, it. I'm, enough. <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh, I, we we got a 10, 10 time limit, I think, per episode. Uh, yeah, people. That's amore. Sure. That's amore. That's well, amore. That's amore. Um, that's amore. No, I Fantasmic <laughs> is awesome. I think it is like a fine wine. It only gets better with time. I also like the new additions that they added, uh, what, last year with uh, Moana and uh, Frozen. Frozen. I yeah. thought Putting actually Dirty yeah. water. Yeah, right. Why not? And um, I love Pocahontas. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good right now. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that was uh, Craig <laughs> and I, I screaming out into the ocean on the fantasy not the fantasy, the Disney wish. I don't know why we just got into a mode where we kept screaming out into the darkness. Uh, we did, yeah. Show yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, they would, someone would make a noise back. So I bet they would. It was security saying, "Please get off the deck and go to your stateroom." They have cameras. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, anyway, uh, we're moving on to our final park. That is Disney's Animal Dak. Kingdom. And speaking of Big Daddy, Flight of Passage, the big bluest daddy of them all. That's true. Um, this is three yeses across the board. I've said before this is not my favorite attraction, but I do think this is a here, really, here. really cool it's experience. Yeah. That is definitely, yeah. You, any adult that goes on this, even if you get massively sick from it, you're going to be like, what did I expect? Especially that first mm. time when you're sitting on those bikes and you're like, how can this be good? How can this be great? Yeah. And it envelops you. You get into that mm. world. You truly do feel the pulsating of the Ooh. the the bike that you're sitting on that is is supposed to be your whatever what they're called they? anymore Banshee. 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 banshees Ekron. banshee Ekron. and uh, I, when you when you throw if it you, all together if, no matter how you slice it or dice it oh gosh oh, this sounds like your hash brown order at waffle house just saying it. um <laughs> the the if you listen to the la culturiste that episode i was telling you about with tina fey bowen yang's podcast with matt rogers is that um, they talk about the flight of passage. Do they? On it. It's one of the things because they uh, love Disney parks and they're okay. like, and they talk about how much they hate that video. Oh, the <laughs> like they try to say it nicely, but they're like, I heard that guy was just pulled that day because somebody else pulled out. And, the, and he was like, I don't think so. <laughs> like, oh, I think funny. that's just how it was. But uh, next that's up at Animal sure. Kingdom, we've got where I would argue you can see one of the most attractive uh, experiences happen at Walt Disney World Festival of the Lion King. Our fire twirler oh. himself. I go for the fire. I stay for the bird dancing. Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, Lion King, another, you know, Beep, 90s hit. Yeah. Yeah, how can you not tumble monkeys? Uh, oh, yeah. You tumble walk monkeys. into this show yeah. thinking like, okay, they're trying to get audience participation out of me. I feel a little uncomfortable yeah, but by the with end this. Of it, you're like, and then you're like, okay, like these are <laughs> actual really talented performers Absolutely. putting on one heck of a show. Whether you like the singing, you like the aerialist, you like the fire dancing, you like mm -hmm. tumble monkeys. I feel like mm -hmm. they offer such... A, a good plethora of performances that you can find something that you like in it. And you know what? Like other circumstances, we've uh, other attractions we've talked about here. You know, we're now in the, the day and age where adults grew up with the Lion King yeah. and our our parents grew up with it, too. So grandparents like it. Adults like it. It's for everyone. Boom. OK, well, have it. obviously, I feel like this one goes without saying. I think Kilimanjaro Safaris is definitely one of the must do things. If you're coming to Walt Disney mm -hmm. World, it's a very unique experience. It's no New Jersey Six Flags Safari, which I did as a kid. Oh, is And that's it? why my mother never not? took me to Animal Kingdom because right, she was like, no, we've Jersey. done the safari. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you drive your own car, I believe, up there. Well, they have um, stuff in Florida. Come on. But, uh, you know. This is a really cool. I mean, I love it. I always yeah, get lucky with the rhinos. Absolutely. I like seeing the rhinos. The animals mm. make up for the cast members who sometimes drive the safari trucks like they're too cool yeah, for school. I hate that. Uh, like oh, they're I acting like they're that, acting like funny. cheesy airline pilots. Like uh, uh, they all have the same voice. How did they do that? How did they, how they all learn the script? taking you on? But this, like uh, they all like the have the same inflection. Yeah. I don't know how they do that. You and know, it does it, drive me crazy. It, I, right? It's something like you, you'll start to notice it in other places. It's a different type of inflection. But mm -hmm. I feel like if you go over to like any of the uh, aquarium based stuff at at Epcot, oh, really? in the in the seas area that you'll see that they also speak with this like upswell. 
in the uh, motorcycle. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, but the all the drivers at Safari speak in the same thing. And I think it's just like you learn it and then you right. and it's then how you, you process like it. I mean, it. it's it, like people used to talk like it on the backlot tour. Right. Too. Oh, and then yeah. They were true. Like, we're automating this. We can't handle this anymore. Yep. Yeah. And Except like, for my part. We still had to do that. Only my favorite director, Michael Bay. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. And he still is. I've only yeah. liked one Safari driver ever, and it was my college program roommate, Garrett. So, Shout out. Just saying that. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, Karen? Garrett. Oh, I okay. thought it was I'll Karen, too. <laughs> yeah, I heard Shout Karen. Shout out to you, Garrett. Like, with or Garrett or Wonder. whoever. I mean, uh, now on the college program, hey. anyone can room with anyone. Oh, is it co-ed? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. Times are, they are changing. Yep. That's true. I will say as an adult, uh, Safari will mess up your back. So if you think like, oh, I did Space Mountain, it's fine. Just watch, watch just, yourself. I missed the bridge. Yeah, I the true. Bridge. I think they should just pave the entire thing. Make it soft. Aren't we glad nice? that the little red script is gone? I'm kind of... <laughs> you guys the remember elephant? that? Is that what his name? Yeah, remember Simba there were one. like poachers oh, and you had to go one. find the poacher. Wilson. Simba one. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I didn't go Wilson. when it was like... Apparently when it first opened, it was a lot more intense. Yeah. Like in terms yeah. of that poacher stuff. Right. I only it got the like second a, version yeah. of it. I didn't go... Because I didn't go till yeah. 2007 for the first time. Okay. I was 2000 and I think yeah, it was I already I gone by then. I the second version of it. But it was still pretty intense. No, it was good. You know, like race off. The little elephant at the end. Yeah, the little amateur. I still love though that they had to keep the the radio. The Like, oh, let's listen to the radio. Yeah, let's tune to the radio. And you're always like, what? Nowadays I listen to I'm like, Why? Why? We don't <laughs> yeah. Need this. yeah. Um, so, okay, next on our list, which I completely disagree with, is Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. If this was on the list, the Tiger, the Kilim- the Maharaja Jungle Trek should have been on the list, but because uh, I think that's better than Gorilla Falls. But you're completely wrong Gorilla because Falls. the tigers are rarely ever yeah. visible on there. Where What's is that guy in this photo? That's a hippo? A hippopotamus. A hip? And a hip? you always see oh, the wow. hippopotamus. That's a good show. You Look always see he the hippopotamus good. when you go in. Uh, there are always oh, at least one or two gorillas that you'll see. And usually there's always a baby gorilla that you're always losing your mind out about. Uh, mm. Gorilla Falls is great. It is excellent. And uh, as Hannah would like to point out too, our Good old fashioned Hurricane Hannah. You take your drink through. Yeah, you go get yourself a Tusker Lager and just enjoy yourself, you know? Mm. Hakuna Matata. Well, I mean, you could. Next up, Expedition Everest. Ooh, yes. I think we all think th- this again is one of the better the better coasters. I'm I'm getting to that age though where it's like the I mean I had a concussion when I was a kid, so I don't know if that has something to Are do with it. Or we just feel bad for you? Is that supposed to like Yeah, it was my <laughs> um, I don't we lost the budget for the violin in the studio, so I was overruled Tiny on that as well. But there is uh the backwards part kind of messes up my equilibrium now. Uh, so um It's part of being an adult, you know. You I know. just Oh, my yeah. mom had to go to first aid and lie down in a room, and I was not embarrassed. I was embarrassed. Um, <laughs> I was like, they were like, do we need to call an ambulance? And I was like, oh, I don't please, no. think so, but is there like a dark pit I could leave her in? Mm. Right. And like they, they, she, they left her in a dark room, and she sat there for three right. hours, and I, like a good son, took her friend over, and we had tempting tigresses, and yes. I would just check in on her. She, she healed eventually. Okay. She healed. She healed. So oh, I'm good. trying to convince Kylie to let me go on a solo vacation where I get to hike to the Everest base camp. I don't want to go up it because okay, I know what What could happen there? I mean, you could still what get could altitude there? sickness and get like really bad headaches. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, hmm. Well, no. Obviously, any you ever watch anything about Everest? It's like the most dangerous thing you well, can no, do. Well, no. Once you climb the mountain, I'm not going to the death zone. I want to go to base camp. I want to see it. You're not going to Chris O'Donnell? I, uh, that was vertical limit. He or, was climbing Everest. Yeah. No, that was the K2. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. They climbed Everest me. in the movie Everest. Never heard of it. <laughs> um, mm, spoiler. <laughs> I feel like Everest for me is like one of those attractions that like they don't make attractions like Everest anymore. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe that's like a bold statement. But I just remember, mm. too, before Everest opened, like the hype, there was so much hype. And yeah. so many like documentaries about Joe Rody and like. You know, they don't. Disney doesn't really do endurance rides in the same way that, like, right. Universal. We brought it up. Velocicoaster, Hulk, yeah. Rip Ride Rocket. You know, these rides that are feet of accomplishments, but they right. kind of are at the same time because I feel like they're great places to introduce. You know, or for people like me that aren't those extremists that are still like this was fun so we don't have original attractions created anymore that is absolutely correct however i do think that disney is turning a new 
uh, leaf with Imagineering in general. Obviously, they yeah. lost a lot of Imagineers over the years, but I think look at what they're doing with Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Mm-hmm. They're shining more of a light on the Imagineers creating the story, the yeah. depths that they're going through to accurately uh, recreate parts of Louisiana. They are trying to shine a focus on Imagineering again, and I think this is going to be a recurring trend to start uh, start making Imagineers more noticeable again. Right. Start really like appreciating what they put into these attractions. And maybe it goes away after Princess and the Frog and uh, nah. Tiana's Bayou Adventure. But I think it's uh, just from what you, you can see it with it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have that background and depth and detail of like we installed a weather vane and why that was important or okay. or That's everything they put okay. in the foliage. In, they in, sent me on a trip to see what Imagineers do. Like, I yeah, know. That's pretty cool. But I, my fear with all of that stuff is that I, I was thinking about it the other day or even today, you know, at Hollywood Studios today, a new snack area opened the hydraulics, whatever it's called. Um, do you smell that? Are you about to say BS? I think there's going to be a snack attack on the horizon. Oh, oh, oh. Um, but I saw on the building where it's like been serving snacks since 1989. And I was like, I get it because that's the year the park opened. But I was like, Disney loves to rewrite its own history all the time. Like oh, write that story like into the it. Where there's Springs a part of me where I was where like, like, why right. didn't you just write 2024? I don't know. Then people would be like, oh, it's new. And then in 20 years, it becomes old. Like, I don't know. Some of that stuff, sometimes there's so much... Sometimes I think there's somebody's too job out there where it's like too much story. I feel you. Yeah. And I was like, somebody was definitely asked to go write what they do during the week. <laughs> and they well, wrote it. I mean, okay, so I'm going to take it there. Like Velocicoaster, like the storyline's just like, yeah, we're training, you know, Velociraptors and, you know, that's it. Go out it's, and that's well, it. That's it. But is it a great coaster? Yes. Yeah. The storyline for that the is best. we built a roller coaster to give you the experience of running alongside a Velociraptor. And to me, that's not telling a story. That's that explaining the purpose story. of right. it. Right. That and, ain't like, oh, you know. Yeah. And that's where in we get into the argument of are they actually doing storytelling or are they saying that they're telling stories when it's like, no, you're not. You're just explaining what you're experiencing. It's not mm-hmm. telling a story. There's not, you know, there, there's there's no classic signs of a story in there with the introduction. Right. And I just, I you know, this. I guess it makes me sad sometimes when I hear the really long stories that Disney comes up with about all this stuff because it's those things where you're like this is going to get lost right. oh, how much of this had already been lost to history well, because we don't document now we document things way more than we used to you know and it's like i just it's one of those like working in an attraction like i did like i worked at like both lights motors action and the backlot tour the water tank part and there was a lot of history involved in that attraction that no one hmm. knew because nobody had really documented it very well so it was a lot so of like God. hearsay this and that yeah. and there was no like attraction bible you know and and a good attraction should have that. They mm-hmm. should have their, you know, not only their standard operating procedures, which every attraction has to have, but then also the background in it too. Like I know Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey did that. So mm-hmm. a good background on what everything meant in the building. So that way you, you right. had that in yeah. there. Uh, I will give a plug though. I think history sometimes it, just because you're not willing to search for it doesn't mean it's not out there and that's when you like stumble upon a great show like connecting with Walt that mm-hmm. will help uncover that history because Michael's looking up all these resources it might be like random articles from websites uh, lectures that he attended stuff like that he compiles it all together to help tell that history in a more cohesive way so uh, the history is out there sometimes you just have to dig for it well, it is it, fair. It, like, but like deeper, a little deeper. Oh, OK. Uh. Well, um, I just think uh, I mean, it's I like I mean, that's a Disney difference again. And I, it's one of those things where I really hope that they don't hold on to it. But it's always hilarious when they will give you the detailed, detailed, like the litany of it all. And then you'll be in another attraction. And they'll be like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> like right. They'll just be like, like the opening of the gardens at Epcot. They're like, eh, yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, <laughs> You're like, right. okay. Like, well, I just love that, you, that both those worlds exist. And it, it's also funny for Walt Disney World because so much of what Disney markets for here is that guest that comes once a year, every five years. Not necessarily like that ultra Disney fan, but the storytelling definitely is more. So I guess it's, you know, a digest at your own risk kind of thing. All right. Well, speaking of it. digestion, what Ooh. a great segue into our next attraction. Talk our next and order. final attraction. <laughs> Dinosaur. And- Dinosaur. Yes. 
Dinosaur. 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 You know, you know how I feel about this attraction. I love it. I think it's great for everybody. I love that it's like scary. There's an element of fear in it. I and I it it I still feel it a little bit because I'm that ridiculous person where you know the line and I think it also has great nostalgia because I know it's not Jurassic Park, but it does still like you are in a pen with dinosaurs and there is if you were born any uh, uh, you know or have existed on this planet and you've seen Jurassic Park, there's no way this doesn't call up that sort of feeling a little bit. I love Universal. It was my home for many, many years. I think Dinosaur does a better job of making you feel like you're in a Jurassic Park movie yeah. than any attraction that is Jurassic Park or Jurassic World at the domestic parks. I have not been on yeah. the awesome one in Beijing mm-hmm. that I've seen the videos of that I think that might actually be the best, uh, which is like Spider-Man, but through Jurassic World. Yeah. So I think that one probably is the best. But domestically, I think you you feel that sense of being in a realm with these dinosaurs better at dinosaur than anything in Jurassic Park. Yeah, I would agree. Also, the campy intro is fantastic. Like I just feel it like seems they... I've arrived just in time to correct. A and obviously we all love her, our queen. Um, but I just feel like Unless they've leaned into it, oh, you know, access denied. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> We're in. You know, I didn't I didn't understand his name being Grant Seeker until like recently. And I was like, he's seeking grants. Well, yeah. I'm embarrassed. It's yeah. amazing. Also, yeah. what a name to then end up in that job. It's also your right. name. What too. are the he's odds? Superman. Also, I seeking think... grants. You're seeking your grant seeker. You're seeking a grant. Oh. Seeking someone named Grant. Ooh. A boy named Grant. Is the dinosaur's name Grant? No, you are. My name's not Grant. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, but um, what? Yeah. Also, I think we're gonna say goodbye to d- Dino or di- Dino Land, d- Dino DNA. Uh, dinosaurs going away, right? I'm trying to move on from your comment. <laughs> I, I'm well with that perplexing end to this week's episode. And that's it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you did, and you want to support us more. Don't forget to book a dreams with don't, don't forget to book a dreams. Don't forget to book a dream with a penny in your pocket. You can book a dream. Um, I just wrote that. A song. 90 um, minute salute to the must do attractions that could have been handled in about 20 minutes. Max. I know. Sorry, babes. Um, so uh, when you're thinking about trying to ride one of these uh, amazing attractions, well, you know who you can book with dreams, unlimited travel. They'd love to help you get down here and you can make your own list and tell us how right or wrong we were. And uh, we'd love to hear it so uh also don't forget uh about our patreon again patreon.com slash diz unlimited and over there we'll be doing our uh patreon after show we will have a slight intermission while we go pick up the bell mm-hmm. no nah, i don't like that i tried to shorthand it I well we go it get tb nope don't TBZ. like that either tbz what's the c tbz like you know like no what's no, the c we don't <laughs> know, <actually. laughs> well it's tbz to me Baby, <laughs> what is the Taco Z? Bell? I don't know. Yeah, what's the Z? It's just oh. like like we hey. see baby, like you know. So what I'm trying to say is your name is Ryan or Rhino, yeah, and your real name though is Grant Seeker because you're seeking a dude named oh, Grant. Oh my gosh. Oh, gay cue stuff. The, cue, <laughs> <laughs> cue the credits. <laughs> oh, see, I was going to take a second there to be like, well, I you can call me Abe because I believe in the ABE always be eating. Oh, yes. So that's that's yeah. what I need to be doing right He's now. He's been waiting that. this entire time. Yeah, episode. I know. I know. And I feel and like I have better segues. So proud of you. Whatever. If you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. You'll get more stuff like this. <laughs> slam that thumbs <laughs> no, up. No, I'm just kidding. Stick slam it. it. And rip what do they it. say? Hey, everyone, before we get started, smash that thumbs up. Stick it and rip it. I Stick don't... it and rip that thumbs up. Oh. But seriously, guys, the thumbs up does help. So, guys, gals. Everybody, please, thumbs up. Please, I'm begging you. No. Um, well, and if you are listening to this podcast, uh, please feel free to rate and review it. We love all the feedback, both positive only and positive. negative. I'm I don't know why I positive, paused there, please. but uh, no. But thank you. And uh, don't forget about all the other shows. Craig, has, I feel like we kind of I, we, I gave a baseline slight tip. He gave the connecting with Walt. Mm-hmm. Hannah. I don't Snack know. attack. Snack attack. Uh, but that's going to do it for this week's episode. We'll see you real soon. Uh, and speaking of Big Daddy, yummy, yummy.